Hi folks, let's uh, quickly recap uh, what we saw in this lesson on uh, comparing a function and the function produced by taking its reciprocal. Okay, so let's take a look at what we saw. So it looks as though all the important information that we get about the original function can help us determine important information about the reciprocal. Okay, so namely, the zeros of the original function give us asymptotes vertical asymptotes on the new function, okay? And if we study the behavior of the original function near those asymptotes, we can determine whether um, the function's approaching positive or negative infinity uh, on either side, okay? The second thing we saw was that we could use the end behavior of the original function to determine the end behavior of the um, reciprocal function. Now, if we're taking reciprocals of polynomials, polynomials always approach positive or negative infinity. So it looks like we can make a more general statement here that if you're taking the reciprocal of a polynomial, well, you're always going to have this horizontal asymptote of zero, okay? Because if the original function always approaches positive or negative infinity, okay, then so uh, the reciprocal will then have to approach zero either from the positive or negative side. Okay, we'll see later on that this necessarily won't be the case for all functions, but for polynomials, we can say that it will be. The other thing to look for is that there are what we call invariant points on a function and its reciprocal, and it all has to do where the original function is equal to positive or negative one, because wherever the original function is equal to positive or negative one, the reciprocal will have the same y value. Okay, and the last thing we saw was how a maximum, sorry, in this case here, a minimum value on our original function um, resulted in a local maximum value on our uh, reciprocal function. Okay, I think you can see that it, you know, something similar will happen if we have a local maximum on our original function, it'll end up giving you a local minimum on your reciprocal function. Okay. So instead of writing all this down, I'll just make reference here to the notes. So there's a couple of definitions that you should definitely know about. You know, we talked about this idea of a rational function, how we define a reciprocal function, okay? And this essentially gives you a recap of all those things that you're looking for, okay? So x-intercepts of f will give you the locations of your vertical asymptotes for one over f. Wherever f is plus or minus one, the reciprocal will also have that y value. And this, this tells you how to interpret the behavior of the function. If f is approaching positive infinity, then one over f is gonna approach zero, okay? Here, if f is approaching zero from a positive side, then one over f is gonna approach positive infinity, okay? Here we see that local maximum on f will become local minimum on one over f, uh, and vice versa. And this is the other thing that I would like to talk about is remember that a reciprocal function is essentially just a fraction. And we realize that the only way for a fraction to be equal to zero is if the numerator is zero. But when we're taking the reciprocal, the numerator is always equal to one. Hence, you can't have any x-intercepts when you're working with these reciprocal functions. And in fact, if we take a look at all our examples, we notice, and even that first one, there's never an x-intercept. Okay, so that's it for this one.